Okay, welcome back my friends. Thank you very much for joining me. May God continue to bless and keep you. Hope you have had a great week. Hope you have had a fantastic time in Jesus. I hope your walk with him is getting better and better as the day goes by. We come back here to part two of the controversy in heaven. So last time we stopped at Satan going around in heaven among the holy angels slandering the name of God. Rebellion begins in his heart against the government of God. So as Satan goes about heaven, those angels who remain loyal, who remain faithful to God, called him to recant his decision and to take a new look at his thoughts and ideas that God is unjust and God is not merciful and that God is selfish and it's because of this why he have all these restrictions upon us. They pleaded with him. They pleaded with him. They pleaded and pleaded with him. This was his point of probation. Because had he recanted his decision, had those angels who sided with him recant their decision, God would have reinstated them back into fellowship with the rest of the universe, the rest of the angels. But Satan went about with his tales that God is not fair, why is it that Jesus is present at every board meeting and he is not? Why is it that Jesus is involved in all the affairs of the universe and he is, is not? Why is it that he can't be present at these meetings? Why is it that he is so powerful, he is so mighty, he is perfect in beauty, perfect in holiness. He was covered with all the precious stones. He walked upon the fiery stones in the presence of God. And how come he can't be at the board meeting? How come he can't be involved in the decisions of the governance of the universe? All this boiled up and bottled up in him until finally erupt into a volcano. Revelation chapter 1 tells us, and there was war in heaven. Lucifer and his angels fight. Satan and his angels fought against God and his angels. Christ stands at the center, at the head of the army of the eternal kingdom of God. And there was battle going on. Because when the angels told him that he needs to recant, he went and deceived those one third even further, telling them it's a lie. If you recant your decision, God will not reinstate you. We have gone too far now for God to accept us. That was a deception. Had they recant, they would have been reinstated. And friends, war erupted the peace of the universe was destroyed there was this loyalty this harmony in god's universe never before have this been seen or known that god's judgment could be questioned his loyalty his rulership skill would have been challenged war break out that angel who stood at the side of God as an covering chariot an archangel the most powerful most brilliant Perfect in all his beauty, he rebelled and with his in his rebellion deceived one third of the holy angels. Satan had such great influence over the minds of the other angels that they did not even think 
twice to question what he was saying to them. They just believed it because they sympathized with him and loyalty to him was spontaneous. Friends, be careful whom you listen to. Be careful whom you allowed to sway your mind. Be careful whom you give such mental loyalty to. Be careful whom you allowed to come close to you and whisper in your ears regarding the character, the reputation, the good name, and the personality of others. Be careful. Because not everyone are led by God. Not everyone who whispers in your ears mean you well. Not everyone who comes with a tale for you to listen to is sent by God. Be very, very careful. Lest you allow your ears, your mind to become a dumping ground for the garbage of Satan. Remember, whatever you choose to do with your mind, whatever you choose to do with your heart, whatever you choose to do with your good intention, whatever you choose to do with that brilliant mind that God gives you, you will have again one day to meet those deeds when God shall reckon an account of every man. For the Apostle Paul reminds us, know ye not that your body is the temple of the living God, the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and you are not your own. You have been bought with a price, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was spilled in your behalf at Calvary. And if God lives in you and in me, we must allow him to transform us, purify us, and cause us to walk in obedience. So friends, that war break out. Revelation chapter 12. And Satan and his angels fought against Christ and his angels. And they lost the battle. Christ won the battle. And Satan was cast out of heaven. Jesus says, And I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. It was a swift dismissal. Instantaneously dismissal. No more. His place was found. No more. And they were cast to the earth. But you might ask, how was the condition of earth when Satan was cast down? In hindsight, Satan was cast down to the earth before man was created. This is what I believe. It was total darkness he was in. The light of God was stripped from him. He was no longer in light. He was in total darkness. The Bible tells us that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Satan had no more God in him. 
no love, no compassion, no mercy, nothing. And all these are godly attributes. So he was in total darkness. He was cast down to earth without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. Satan was on the face of the earth. In Job, the Bible te tells us that when the sons of God meet, Satan was among them, representing earth. And God asked him, where have you come from? He said, from, I came from earth, from walking up and down on it. So when the time came that God created man, Satan saw. He saw this and he sprung into action. Yes! He's creating humans. If I can get them to side with me, I have another chance. I've taken over. Adam and Eve were warned about Satan and what had transpired in heaven and what has resulted in his downfall. So the angels were created, they were placed on probation. One third of them failed and sin entered into the God's universe in the angelic family. So now God is going to create a next family, which is the human family. And now they are in the Garden of Eden and they are placed as well on probation. One of my favorite writers, Ellen White, Ellen G. White, in her account in the book Spirit of Prophecy, She reminds us that of all the tests that God could think on to allow to come to the newly created human family, Adam and Eve, he could think of was the one of eating of the not eaten rather of the forbidden fruit so God had said to them of all the trees of the garden you may freely eat but of the trees of the knowledge of good and evil you may not for the day you eat thereof you will surely die so this was their test and the garden was vast. It had every fruit you can think of. Beautiful mangoes, juicy grape, luscious pomegranate, apples, pears, plums, guineps. And every fruit that you could think of were there. And they could have partake freely of everything except that one. And friends, Satan knew this. So, he, Satan, was permitted to go only at one tree. And that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Only there he was permitted to go. He was restricted from going anywhere else in the garden. God warned Adam and Eve not to separate themselves from each other because of this dreaded foe. And Satan, of all the creatures that God created, in that book, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, Volume 2, Ellen White reminds us that the serpent was of 
the most beautiful of all God's creature that he created in the animal kingdom. He had wings and he could fly. And when he does fly, his appearance in mid-air was like burnished gold. And he was wise. And Satan entered that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he impersonate the serpent and make it appear that it was the serpent who was speaking and Eve separated herself Adam allowed themselves to be separated and she wandered and wandered till she find herself at that tree and she thought to herself why is it that we are not allowed to eat of this tree and as she thought to herself she heard the voice of the serpent speaking hey had god said you shall not eat of this tree and eve to her surprise she could hear is as if she could hear her own thoughts being echoed back to her and the enemy began his work of saying to her that if you eat of this tree you shall not surely die because God don't know that the moment you eat of this tree your eyes shall be open and you shall be like God knowing good and evil and no doubt the enemy was at this point pluck one of the fruit as Ellen White reminds me reminds us and began to eat it and make it appear that it's the fruit that she's eating that he's eating which has given the serpent the ability to speak and while eating it he was living he's not dead she thought to herself could it be that the serpent is correct satan make it appear that she by eating it would enter upon a new phase of existence more powerful more wise And Ellen White reminds us that the enemy plucked the fruit and placed it in her hand and she began to eat and then she began to pick for herself and she eats she disbelieved God and believed the serpent and right there she was deceived and she now being deceived had sinned sided with the enemy now she has become the medium of the destruction of her husband she plucked the fruit make her way to find her husband whom she have wandered away from his side and when Adam saw Eve coming with the fruit Adam was struck with horror and surprise and thought this might have been the foe that we have been warned against who have caused you to do this and she begged him nothing is wrong I have not felt anything different I stranger anything but I feel as if there's something new happening within me and friends Adam thought 
There is no one like her here. No one like him but her. And she must die. I can't endure this thought of she leaving me. I loved her. I need her. I want her. I cannot allow her to go. Adam pondered and he pondered. Adam failed to realize that God who had created him, created her, is able to make another like her for him. Rather than Adam give thoughts to these and believe God and refrain from eating of the forbidden fruit, Adam decided, you know what? If she die, I'm dying too. He take the fruit knowingly that he is rebelling against God's authority Adam choose to sin Eve was deceived into sin but Adam deliberately chose to sin he ate and the moment they eat lo and behold Satan joyed in his success he couldn't believe his catch that he have the human family on his side. Now, every children they give birth to would be his. Not only that, but the dominion, the kingdom and the dominion of earth now belongs to him. The Bible reminds us that by whom we overcome his subjects we are to whom we over, have overcome us. In war, whenever a nation destroy another nation, conquered them, that conquered nation becomes subjected to the nation that has conquered them. So Satan is now the ruler of the human family. They have surrendered themselves over to him true rebellion so friends when Adam and Eve were in the garden sinless they wore a garment of no earthly fabrication but they were covered in the garment of light as the angels are And that robe of light were covering them wherever they go, which is the glory of God covering them. And the atmosphere before sin was beautiful, conducive to excellent, perfect health because they were perfect, but they weren't immortal as long as they partake of the tree of life this would have perpetuate eternity and they ate of the tree of life for as long as they were created until the day they sinned the Bible reminds us in Genesis that God placed angels at the entrance to the tree of life to guard it on every side with flaming sword that turn it in all direction that no children of Adam would go there and partake and live forever Satan's plan was that they would sin and they did sin and still partake of the tree of life so that sin would become immortalized. This was his plan, but he failed. 
Praise be to God. Now that Adam and Eve sinned, suddenly there was a shift in the climate of the atmosphere. And they began to feel the chill, began to feel the difference in the atmosphere. And lo and behold, they realized that they were naked. Their eyes were open to their nakedness. Not that they were blind. It simply means that the glory of God that had so long covered them, that robe of light, suddenly disappeared. And they began to sow fig leaves to make apron to cover their nakedness. The, the, this nakedness was not, was not just nakedness of body, but also nakedness of soul. They had no protection for their souls. They were subjects now to the unmingled wrath of God because they have sided with Satan. Know that they have sided with Satan, they must also share in the punishment of Satan. But God, hallelujah, in his grace and his mercy, steps in. Why? Because man was cheated out of their eternal habitation. They were deceived. Man did not willingly, Eve did not willingly succumb to Satan. She was deceived. She did not deliberately go against God's will. She was deceived into sinning against God. God came on the scene. Adam and Eve had the privilege of communing with holy angels. Communing, open communion with God. But because of sin, all this was now all this privilege was lost because they could not endure the presence of God in their sinful state. They would have been destroyed. <clears throat> so God in his mercy came down. And the Bible says in Genesis that in the cool of the day, they heard the voice of God as he walked in the garden. And Adam and Eve hid from the presence of God and God called out unto Adam Adam where art thou Adam responds I've heard I heard thy voice walking in the garden and I was afraid when God asked the question Adam where art thou God was giving Adam the opportunity to confess what has happened Adam failed to confess what had happened and began to blame his wife. You see, friends, I call on every husband. We are responsible for what goes on in our home. Regardless of who done it, regardless of what happened, the man is responsible for what goes on in the home. He is the one who is accountable for anything that happened in the household, the man. That's why God didn't call Eve. God called Adam, where are you? Adam, where art thou? Where art thou? Where are you at this point in time, spiritually? Where are you? Where are you at this point in time, spiritually, in your accountability to God? Where are you? In your decisions that you are making, where are you? In the spouse you have, where are you? In the friends you are keeping, where are you? I was naked. Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you not to? The woman you gave to me, she gave me of the fruit and I did eat. Then God said to the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent that you made, he deceived me and I did eat. God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed be thee among all the cattle 
of the earth. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. Upon thy belly. The fact that God said upon thy belly the serpent is to go simply means that the serpent was not at this point going upon his belly. Hey, he was flying in the air. And thus shalt thou shall be thy food. So we see here that the serpent was cursed and his state of existence has changed. And then God, when God speak to the serpent, indirectly God was speaking directly to Satan, the enemy. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed he shall crush thy head but you will only bruise his heel so the imagery here is that the woman the seed of the woman will crush the serpent head so in the process of crushing the serpent head the woman, the seed of the woman, healed, was bruised. Watch this. We see that the crushing of the head of the serpent is Jesus dying in the place of Adam's race, paying the penalty for our sins, and Satan's head crushed at the resurrection at the crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus Christ, a pure life of holiness, obedience to God. All this process of the life of Jesus Christ was Christ crushing the head of Satan, the seed of the woman. Jesus is the seed, the promised seed of the woman. And all of us who walk in obedience to Christ are heirs to the promise and to the kingdom of God. So, I had to close off part two, part three coming. Friends, as we begin part three, join me again in the mighty name of Jesus. As I pray, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. As we conclude in part three, do join again. Come back for part three. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.